opportunity now, I think, for a, a bit of engagement, a, a bit of dialogue, really, which is what we're after. So, so is there anything Great, you'd like thank to... you. Well, I respect your opinions and thank you for coming on to the show to take part in the discussion. Um, one of my first questions that I was very keen to ask, I mean, were you at the... The I haven't the Cambridge one, but other ones. Other ones, OK. And can I ask you what your uh, view is of the events of October the 7th? What do, you, what do you think happened on October the 7th in Israel? Well, obviously, the camps haven't started because of October the 7th specifically. Right. They're starting, I mean, this week in loads of encampments up and down the country. Um, they've been, like, celebrating and having to, like, memorise the fact um, that this week uh, commemorates the Nakba, which took place 76 years ago, which means catastrophe, which is a massive symbol of what Israel has been doing um, for the last 76 years. This isn't about October the 7th. And to start with that is just entirely disingenuous, I think, on your part. I really want to say that I think it's great, actually, that you went to that camp today um, and tried to talk to those students. Um, and you kind of embarrassed yourself, I would say, whilst doing that, because it was a reminder for me, and I'm sure for other people watching, that actually the Palestine movement brought you down, and the Palestine movement has the potential to bring down lots of other Tory ministers and the whole Tory government, and not just the Tory government, I would say any government and any mainstream political party that is backing what Israel is doing right now, which is a genocide, and that's what people right. are protesting. Do you want to come back to that? Bringing down the government. Um, well, so, so you're saying your encampment has nothing to do with the events of October the 7th or Israel's uh, response to October the 7th? Okay. Is, that, is that what you're saying? It's totally detached to... October the 7th and Israel's response? The only thing that is detached, I would say, is actually your views and your approach to this whole situation and the whole of the Tory government. The people, the student protesters, are very attached to what is happening in Palestine and they are doing what they can in order to stop universities who provide, I think, £450 million to the Israeli state, to the Israeli military, rather than investing in their own education um, and what they should be putting money into you are the one and your government is completely out of touch with what actually the majority of people in Britain think about what's happening. The majority of people in Britain do not support what Israel is doing and actually want us to stop sending weapons. And you were saying today that we should send more, which is completely opposed to what people in Britain actually want. So I think you're detached. Right, so on, on arms. So can I ask you, what's your, what's your view of Hamas? I don't want to talk about Hamas. I want to talk right. about... Why? And the reason that you want to talk about Hamas is because you want to keep justifying spending more money for Israel, right? Sunak earlier, um, a month or two ago, was talking about increasing defence spending to 2.5%. They want to spend loads of money on that, but no money on the NHS, no money on education. You want to cut pensions, you want to cut council budgets. That's what the government that you support is doing, which is causing serious suffering in so this, is this country about, as So well. this is not to do with Hamas, it's not to do with it's Israel? Linked. It's about because the Conservative government. It's an anti-conservative. You're bringing up Hamas. Of course we're anti-conservative because the right. Conservative government is facilitating and supporting a genocide. And not just that, it's also overseeing a horrific set of policies, austerity policies, that are damaging everyone's lives in Britain today. OK. So you have no view on Hamas and you have no message for Hamas and you have no I'm not here to connection talk about Hamas. to us. You're not here. Right. No, so you I don't, don't have, have a view. connection to Hamas. OK. And so what's your message? Do you, do you believe Israel has a right to exist? Do you, what, what is your message to the majority of people in Britain who don't support you, who hate the Tories, who hate you specifically? Right, you went to Cambridge no today, you were saying, you were saying... I think that there no answer, answer. Well, was no, a fair no, question. I don't want to pile, I don't okay. pile in and, and look, absolutely, you know, crack on as far as I'm concerned, but uh, she, she did ask you a, a direct question there. I think our viewers would like to know, do, do you think Israel has a right to exist? I think that's a silly question, to be honest. And I think you're putting, you're asking the wrong questions. You're asking those questions to distract from the central point that I was making, which is that these students, the reason you don't like these student protesters and you don't like these encampments, one, is because they've already brought you down, but two, it's because of what it represents, which is a growing movement and a growing feeling in this country, which is against the Tories and against any main political party. You have made that point. I am that very interested. Although when I did, when I did go there, there were lots of posters about Israel. There were posters about Palestine, and there were placards about Gaza. So yeah, we can't completely 
ignore the issue about what's happening no, in Israel yes, and let's Gaza. Let's talk about it and I'm asking Let's talk about what the Israeli questions. state has done for the last 76 years. So would you say that not Israel has seven. a right to defend us itself? Israel does not have the right to do what it is doing right now, which is a genocide, which is the right. criminal enslavement and trapping people in certain places and then saying, you've got to move somewhere else. The ongoing invasion of Rafa that has been so spoken about today, the displacement of millions of people, of course they don't have the right to do that and no one thinks they do. Right. You and you posing those questions is exactly what makes students in Cambridge think, I don't want to talk to you, I don't want to talk to any war criminal, I want to grow this encampment. I want to grow a movement. Well, it's quite, it's quite that a strong, strong right. stuff. I mean, as, as far as criminal. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, you like, are war criminal. How would you respond? How would you respond to that? I mean, you know. Well, well, you made some interesting points there about genocide. So let's let's focus on that. So, the the legal definition of genocide is the targeted destruction of a group of people defined by their race, their nationality, their mm -hmm. ethnicity, or their religion. In what way would you say that Israel is targeting? a group by those is that standards. serious? In what way is Israel targeting a group? So the killing and the injuring of over 100,000 people already in Palestine to you doesn't feel like a targeted approach They're towards specific Hamas, people. And they are aiming you don't to believe that. degrade. You don't believe that at all. If and I, I can saying... finish my point to you, because I've listened to you quite a lot, mm. uh, what do you say about the very legitimate aim I would put to you that Israel is targeting a terrorist organization called Hamas and is aiming to degrade, destabilize and, and even kill Hamas terrorists. No. You're, you I don't, disagree with that? I disagree with that completely. And okay. calling legitimate, you're talking about legal. Even if you want to talk about the legal world, law, whatever, well, all of those like institutions, the International Court of Justice, have also said that legally what is happening and what Israel is doing um, is, is a genocide well, and, that's and is moving towards a genocide. Let, let's stick to and facts I think here. That, and I think, OK, let's stick to that, facts. That is 40,000 okay, people right, dead. Fine. More than that, that's what, injured. What? Well. Millions of people displaced. That is the reality. Those are the facts on the ground. And, well, again, and, let's stay with facts. People, so the International Court of Justice has not said... It doesn't, it doesn't matter that, at the end of the day. I think it might... I mean, we've... It doesn't, we, we, we can argue over specific bit, words. We can argue over specific words. It is a fact that they are enacting a horrific mm. massacre right now. Um, and you talking about Hamas, it's just a smokescreen for their general interests in the region. And it's not just them acting by themselves, is it? America is backing them financially, militarily, and our government is backing them financially, militarily. And students are protesting because they want to stop their universities investing in that entire system. And it's not just the students who are protesting. Obviously, there have been protests all up and down mm. the country, protests that you tried to attack and failed to do, and the protests grew ever since then because you are out of touch with what people actually think and actually want. Well, that's interesting because in one, one, in one, th one, th yeah, one, one of the key things that, that defined that particular moment, really, of British political history was, was, was the hate marches situation. Yeah. OK? Yes. So, you know, how, how would you respond to some of the things that have been said there about that? Well... I mean, can I, I just want to correct a few things for the record. So the International Court of Justice, and I, I think you dismiss them as words and in, you know, I irrelevancies. I don't think what the International Court of Justice says is, um, you know, negligible. The International Court of Justice has not said categorically that Israel is committing genocide. Okay. The International Court of Justice has said that the Palestinian people uh, may have a plausible right to be protected from genocide. No one would disagree with that. But we must be careful about miscommunicating um, and misrepresenting what the International Court has said. It has not said, and indeed no authority has said that Israel is committing genocide. Okay. There is no evidence sure. for a genocide. No evidence. The second thing I would also say <laughs> is that... Is that real? The, 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 we're going back to the mm. marches. Now, mm. Um, the issue of the march is, of course, everybody has the right to peaceful protest and expressing their views. But what we have seen, and I'd be interested in your views, is anti-Semitism. Uh, we've seen from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That is an anti-Semitic chant calling for the eradication of Israel, the eradication of Israelis, 
and the eradication of Jewish people. No, you're a liar. You're a liar. On every single one of these mass protests, right, there is a huge Jewish block. In all of these encampments, the encampments that you went to today, even in Cambridge, talking about all this kind of stuff, the Cambridge group, um, Cambridge Jews for Justice, they said, you are weaponizing their identity to promote a culture war. And, that, and that's all this is, because you've got no actual real policies or statements or anything to offer people in this country. Let's be honest, the reason you're here and the reason you went today is because you want to be the leader of the Tory party. You're interested in your career. You're interested in promoting that. So that's why you come out could, with, could your, I ask, with your could life. I, could about, I ask? I mean, this is, um, to be honest, I'm completely... Um, and that's oh, it's yeah. completely false to call the Marxists cool. anti-Semitic. People don't believe that. Do you, uh, I'm, I'm completely gripped by this. I'm sure most people are. But um, uh, are you not just dismissing anti-Semitism there? Because there is anti-Semitism. No. I mean, I have heard anti-Semitism at some of these marches. I have been in amongst quite a few ones. Not the ones I was at today, absolutely. But uh, quite a few of the ones that I mean, I have been. And quite often when you scratch the surface a bit, there are some anti-Semitic views. You, it might come across like you are dismissing anti-Semitism a bit. I don't think it does, because the thing is, like, let's talk about the broader context of this, which is Suella Braverman lecturing anyone about racism, I don't think is going to... Like, I don't think anyone's going to listen to that, basically. You specifically and your government have been the architects of horrific racist policies and whipping... You're talking about hatred, you're talking about violence, you're talking about all of these terrible things. I was watching the thing today, you're saying war is a tragedy and all of this kind of stuff. First of all, capitalism produces all of that tragedy, right. produces racism, produces all I, these... I mean, I do wonder if that's a central that, point, isn't it? Is it, is it? Is it... I, 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 look, I'll, I'll let you come on there. No, but, no. you know, there, there have been the, the allegations of, of racism there. But, again, it is actually your main argument for you is you, you want to smash the capitalist system. Absolutely, because right. capitalism produces war and produces imperialism, yeah. which fundamentally has been driving everything that's happened over the last 76 years. It isn't just about the last seven months or anything like this. I'm entirely opposed to the capitalist system and, and the horrors that it produces yeah. across the world in many different places, but also in this country too. And that's what okay. you support. And okay, well, well, let's, right, let's, 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 let's come back to a couple of points there. Well, so there's the racism stuff points. and there's the capitalism stuff. So go on. And, and there's the point which is often lost in this debate. So you mentioned Jewish people who are supporting the encampments, Jewish people on the marches. That is, again, a misrepresentation of the situation. The only Jewish people who are accepted as part of these encampments and marches are people, Jewish people, who don't support the State of Israel. And there are some Jews, there are a minority of Jewish people within the Jewish community who are uh, not supportive of the concept of a State of Israel. Jewish people who disagree with you, I would argue, would not be welcome on your marches. They would be intimidated, they would feel... Uh, harassed and uncomfortable. And in fact, we've got evidence of many incidents of anti-Semitism since October the 7th on campus around the country where Jewish students have felt that they cannot express themselves and they cannot uh, behave and, uh, and, uh, and live freely on campus. And I, I, that's, that's one important point. In terms of the charge against racism, listen, I, I mean, that's... I don't agree with that. Uh, you know, the government and our government policy is to control migration. That's something that we've been elected to do. We have a mandate to do that. And it's something that we owe the British people. And then lastly, on the capitalism... the majority of the British on people don't support we you have, uh, or the rest on, of your on, government. On capitalism, uh, listen, we're, we're, we could talk for hours about capitalism, yeah. but I would just point out, you know, your, your, your trainers, your, your bracelet, uh, everything you're wearing, the coffee you had this morning, the car you Made drove in... Made by workers. The, the car you drove workers. in today are all products of capitalism. We're in this studio, we're living in a free and democratic society because we're beneficiaries of capitalism, growth, enterprise and freedom. No, the only and so who it's really from interesting and what I would like challenge yourself. you to think about and reflect on is as a beneficiary of capitalism, uh, where yeah, you have a lot of luxury comparatively by luxury. global standards, uh, you are actually uh, undermining the very system that has brought millions of people, in fact, billions of people, out of poverty around the world and brought education, good standards, good health care, clean water, untrue. education, fair untrue. treatment untrue. to girls, five housing, million people, housing five and million wealth children. and prosperity to the world. Five million around. children every single year die needlessly of cool. malnutrition, of preventable diseases, cool. and you sit here saying that it's bringing people from yeah, into can I, can I, can it. I, can it is can digressing, I, can because I, we need to talk about uh, the Palestine yeah, That's exactly, exactly that. So yeah. I just want to, I want to ask you a quick point on this, because I've now been to a few of these, uh, a couple of these student encampments, right? 
I'm not convinced that the vast majority of people at those encampments are actually students at those universities. Could you explain about how you organise these? Because I think it's important for people to know. Like the Cambridge one, there's one at Oxford, there's been one I think at Sheffield and Leeds and places like that. Because it's easy to give the impression that these are students at those universities and I just don't think they are, are they? And well, why they are. do they wear masks? They are. Are they wearing they are. masks? Why are they concealing their some identity? Some people wear masks, some people don't. They are. These are Pretty student, much everyone was wearing a mask student today, protests, say. right? These are student protests. And in some places, other people, not students, have gotten involved. And I think that's a great well, thing. Are they students at the university? They should grow so, are, because are they? I think the staff from those universities should get involved. Mm. And in loads of, in almost every single one of the encampments, there's statements of support from the staff who want to encourage the students. And not just that, wider people from the community coming to provide food, to provide support for what the students are doing. And the reason that they're doing that is because everyone has realised that you cannot appeal to politicians. There's not a single politician in this country that is actually going to do something to try and stop what's taking place. And they are realising the only faith that people can have, the only power that people really have, is in themselves. Oh. Um, and oh. that's what I'm here to promote. And that's why we need to oh. widen out the encampments and, and grow the movement to beyond what it currently is oh. doing so that we can actually halt the government and our and, and their support for the war machine in, in the okay world. right so, so so there we go so i'll give the final word on this because we are very pressed for time you know you have had a good opportunity here to engage with somebody, you know, in a wholehearted discussion about what you've seen. What's your What's your view on what we've heard? Well, well having uh, discussed a little bit, I mean, uh, you know, one thing that strikes me is, you know, the the lack of facts in the conversation and in 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 the debate, uh, the slightly irrational perspective on, uh, you know, basic. Uh, facts of our society of which you're a beneficiary like capitalism but you'll never you know we, we won't just we won't agree on that and ultimately your refusal to answer basic questions about Hamas and Israel's right to defend herself right now it's uh, um, you know it, interesting uh, to hear your views we're not going to agree. I'll give you a fact. 40,000 people killed by Israel, nearly 100,000 uh -huh. injured in the process, millions of people displaced. Not a fact. That is a fact. Could and I just ask one, 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 one more important fact? fact, 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 fact. And you're a liar. Look, 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 one more really important point, just to, you know, it's a yes or no, really, before we go. Does Israel have a right to exist? This is the wrong question well, that you're asking. I, uh, mm. Well, OK. Mm. I, I think that's quite tough. And, and quite should the hostages be released? Listen, like, why is there? Why is this conflict happening in the first place? Who is responsible it's easy for to it? Say yes to Who that. is the responsible? Do you for believe it? women were raped on October the seventh? <sighs> I believe there is a lot of violence taking place across that whole region, and I think Western imperialists are the first people who set up that problem in the first place, and they're continuing to back right. everything that Netanyahu refusing is doing. to condemn Hamas. And you okay. refuse to condemn the whole system that produced all of that thank violence right. in the first place. Thank Both you. of you, thank you very much. I do honestly think that is uh, one of of the most gripping parts of television that I've been a part of. And I want to say a massive thank you for coming thank in you. and for talking seriously. And so I want to say a massive thank you to you as well for being a part of uh, today's output. So both of you genuinely thank you very, very much. Right, OK. Gosh, well, I would like to just do a little bit of a recap quickly now uh, of some of the things that went on at this set. Uh,